When it comes to updating your VMs in the cloud, there's basically two choices. You can either patch VMs in place, which is more of a traditional way of doing things, or you can focus on a rip and replace strategy of some kind where you're going to roll out new systems and then throw the old ones away. With that in mind, we want to build on a previous video that we had done on image management and take our images into the new Azure portal and be able to use them to more easily and automatically update our session hosts in our pools so that we can stay as up to date as possible. So in the past, when I've shown how to roll out new images, I've used a custom template that I wrote, which is up on my GitHub, and that method will totally work. However, in the new Azure portal, there is an even easier easier way to add new session hosts. The limiting factor has been that once you build that very first VM in that host pool, the add button will build more of the same. So you can't yet use that process to upgrade to new image versions. But with what we're gonna cover today, we solve that issue and get you to the latest version of your images without having to do any extra work. So stick around for the next few minutes as we show you how to use the shared image gallery to automatically update your WVD host pools. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. And the Shared Image Gallery is a service that helps us to build structure around our custom images in Azure that allow us to scale up within a single region as well as scale out across multiple regions. Now we have covered the Shared Image Gallery previously at the Azure Academy, and I'll link that up at the top. You can go check that out if you missed that. But today we're going to focus on how we can use the gallery with WVD. So over in our Azure documentation, we'll scroll down just a little bit and go to Windows Virtual Machines. And over on the left, we'll go into Concepts and then go to Images. This is where you can find all the stuff about the shared image gallery. One thing that I'll call out for you is over here on the right, we'll click the link for limits. When thinking about your virtual machines at scale, one shared image gallery can have 1000 images. And of each of those thousand images, we can have 10,000 versions. And then each one of those versions can have 10 replicas. Now how we end up deploying systems from the gallery will have something else to do with the kind of scale that we can get. So the way that this would work today is you've gone through and built your Windows 10 multi-session image and you've configured it however you want to. And we've captured that image now and we have a shared image gallery in the cloud. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this image and inject it into the shared image gallery. And then when we do, it's going to become an image definition. From that definition, we will then create versions. And each one of those versions can have replicas. And we store those in a particular region. Now we can also scale out from there into multiple regions. And that makes deploying WVD anywhere in the world from the same image very simple. Now, as you go through your image management and update process, you're going to then have a new version of that image, which we can replicate out just as easily and the WVD admin portal will be able to spawn new VMs from that latest image version automatically. So here we have a virtual machine that I've configured with multiple applications and other system settings. And now we're ready to capture it. And so I'm running the sysprep process. And if you're unfamiliar with how this process works, you can go check out the video up here on the top where we covered how to do image management for WVD. Back in the Azure portal on the same VM, we'll now go to capture. And we'll set the name of our image as WVD-NewPortal-05. That way we know which host pool this belonged to and what month it was created. We've got our resource group selected where we're going to store this. And we've checked the box to automatically delete the VM once we've created this image. And we'll go ahead and click Create. And there you can see our completed image. So if we click on that, we should do a test deployment to make sure that everything works. And since we've done this several times, we'll just run through this real fast. We'll just call it test image one, and you can see our image is pre-selected, building B2MS, and there's all of our credentials. We'll skip past the disks and go to the network, building it on our WVD network. And we'll set up our boot diagnostics, as well as add all of our appropriate tags, and then create. And our VM is complete, so let's go to connect. And we're able to log in with no problem. We're on the right VM, all the information looks correct, and there's all of our apps. So we can throw this VM away now. And as we're deleting all that stuff, let's open our shared image gallery. And our first step is to add our image as a new definition file. 
So we'll be putting this in the East US. We've got our image already named here as WVD-Win10Multi. It is a Windows image and it's for VMs that are Gen 1. It already has been generalized and we've got a publisher offer and SKU set up here for our environment. We'll click next. And now we need to add the version of this image and we'll call it 05.0.1 because this is created in May and this is the first iteration. For our image source, we'll select our Azure VM image that we've just captured. And we want to be sure that we do not exclude this from latest. We'll need that latest feature flag in order for this process to work. And I'll set July 1st as the end of life date for this image version. And we'll scroll down. Here's where we can set the different replica counts. And replicas are for the purpose of being able to scale out how many VMs we can spawn from this image. So the way that it works right now is that you can create 20 virtual machines from a single replica at any one time. So if you wanted to build 100 VMs at a time, then you're going to need five replicas. But for my use case today, I just need one. So I'll click next and I filled out my publishing details here and you can fill that out how that makes sense in your environment. We'll scroll down for our VM deployments. And this is the recommendations when you deploy this image as to the system resources that should be there for this workload. So I want you to be able to use anything from two CPUs up to 64 and with eight gigs of RAM up to two terabytes, building on premium SSDs and I'm setting the end of life date for this particular image definition to be the end of June. And we'll hit next and then add our tags and we'll hit the review and create button and everything looks good, so we'll create. Now that that process is complete, we've got our new image definition. So we'll click on that and we can check out the particular configuration that we had when we built it. And of course we can change it if we need to. And under our image versions, we've got our 05.0.1 image and I'll click on that. And from here we can create new VMs or VM scale sets. Over on the left, we'll go to update replication and here's where you can build out the number of replicas in your primary region as well as scale out into multiple regions. And notice that the maximum that you can go is 10 replicas per region. So just keep that in mind. Back in the WVD admin portal, we go to our host pools and we go to an existing host pool. And then we go to our session host and we click the add button here. This again is being locked by the version of the image that we had spawned this from initially. So you can't change the image after you've built that first VM. So we'll have to take a step back and create a new host pool. And since you're watching this video, you can avoid that by creating a host pool from your shared image gallery in the first place. And I'll put this in my new portal resource group and we'll call this host pool SIG-HP-0 and SIG stands for shared image gallery. We'll make this a pooled host pool with a 15 user max session limit in breath mode and we'll hit next and we'll go to add a virtual machine here and we'll build our VM in the East US since that's where our images are. We'll build two VMs with the prefix of SIG-WVD and we'll scroll down. We'll come back to the image in a second. We're building this on our existing WVD network and we're joining to a specific OU and we're leveraging our AD join account that has specific delegation over that OU for the joining process. Scrolling back up to the image, we have basically two choices, the gallery and storage blobs. So if your VHD is sitting in a storage account, then you can get the exact URI for that image so that you can reference it. The way that I recommend that you be managing your images is as official Azure images. That means you would take that VHD file, deploy a new VM from it, and then capture that as a proper Azure image like we did a few moments ago. When you do that, then you can use the gallery section. Now the three images that are here in the gallery dropdown are part of the Azure Marketplace image, and that's how our other host pool was set up. So how can we reference our own custom images well we just click this link to browse all images and at the top here we go to my items and we can see our image that we captured earlier and under shared images, there's our image in the shared image gallery. Now the difference between using these two images is that this image, much like the Azure gallery images, is a fixed static version. If you use those, then the session host that you're provisioning will always be from that particular version of the image. And at least as far as things are today, you can't update them. 
with the shared image gallery, there is a feature flag that's part of using the image in the gallery that says that we're always going to use the latest version of the image. Therefore, all of the updates that we make to the image in the gallery is then going to be reflected here in our host pools. And if you want to really go do this at scale, then you can do this across multiple Azure AD tenants as well. So several large enterprises manage multiple Azure AD tenants with lots of subscriptions. You can actually span your shared image gallery across all of them and go take a look at my original shared image gallery video for how to do that. I'll just click on our Windows 10 multi-image here and we'll click next and we'll add a new workspace for this and we'll call it the SIG WVD WS for workspace. And then we'll hit next and add some tags. And for those of you who aren't using tags yet, I gotta say you're doing it wrong. Tags are a way to add extra information to your systems so that you can leverage that later, either in discovering costs, finding specific applications that span multiple resource groups or subscriptions, and they can even be used for automation. So if you're not using tags, you really should start. And we've got a whole video series on Azure governance to help you through that process. You can go check that out in the top right. So we'll hit the review and create button and everything looks good, so let's hit create. Our session hosts have finished building and now we're going to log in and I've got my client open here with the user Black Adam. We'll go to log on to that desktop and thanks to FS Logix, our profile loaded automatically and everything looks good. So now what we want to do is we want to create a new image version. So we'll just go through and uninstall a few applications just so we know that this is going to be a different version of our image. Back in the WVD portal, we go to session hosts. We can see that we've got an active session on number one here and we can see that is user Black Adam. So we'll send him a console message and we'll hit OK to that and that instantly pops up inside our session telling us it's time to log out. But before we do, we'll go back to the portal and we'll go to the users section and type in Black Adam and we'll click on him and we can see our assignments and under sessions there we can see that he's logged on to m one with ID number two. Hey, you want to see something cool? We're going to shadow that existing session of Black Adam. And this is a normal function of the RDP tool where we use the slash V to call out the IP address or the DNS name of the system we want to target with the shadow flag and the session ID, which is number two. We just got that from the WVD portal. And depending on your group policy setup, you can do this with no consent. And now you're watching my shadow session of the Black Adam. So whatever it is that he's doing, I can see what's going on. On. That includes opening any kind of applications or command prompts. So anything that's going on, we can now observe, which would allow us to help diagnose issues, or we could just as easily take control over the system, depending on how your group policies are set up. And from the system that I'm shadowing from here, you see I don't have actual control over the system, so that all depends on your group policy configuration. But the window does support dynamic resizing, so that no matter how big I make the window, I can still see everything that I need to. All right, so you can enjoy that one for free. So if you'd like to see this feature baked right into the WVD admin portal, making this a lot easier to do, go ahead and leave me some comments down below and I'll be sure to pass them on to the product group. And just in case you're interested in what it looks like when you request consent, that's what it would look like to the end user. Saying whatever domain you're in, your username is trying to request access. Do you want to accept or decline? All right, so the next thing that we need to do in order to update our image version is we need to capture this through sysprep again, and that's located in the C Windows System32 sysprep folder. Now we wanna run this as administrator, and we're gonna set it to generalize and then shut down, which kind of takes us full circle here. And that process will be done in a moment, and then we'll capture it as our new image. Let's go into that virtual machine and we'll just boot this out of our pool. All right, and with that cleaned up, we'll go back to our virtual machines and we'll take VM1 where we were logged into and hit our capture button. And just like we did in the beginning, we'll give it a name, store it in a resource group, check the box to automatically delete the VM. This time we're gonna store it as a zone redundant image and then we'll hit create. 
And with the capture process complete, we're now ready to add our new image version. So we'll click on our image definition, then over on the left, we'll go to image versions and we'll add a new version. We'll select the region where our image is located. This will be the 05.0.2 image. And then we'll select the Azure VM image that we just created. Again, we do not want to exclude this as the latest. Set the date for the end of the image life to be August. And we'll scroll down. We just need one replica at this point. And we will make this zone redundant and hit next. And the default encryption is fine with me. And if you're interested in us doing a new video on disk encryption, because there are some cool new features, give me some comments down below and we'll be happy to do that. We'll hit next and add our tags and then hit next and we'll create our new image version. Back in the shared image gallery, now we've still got our single image definition. We click on that and then on the left, we go to our versions and there is our new version. Back in the WVD admin portal, we'll go back to our host pool and we'll click on our SIG WVD and we'll go to our session hosts. And at the top, we'll click to add a new host. And since we're adding a new host to an existing pool, these settings are already chosen for us. We'll hit next and we'll just provision one new VM. And notice again that these settings around the image cannot be altered, but that's okay because the shared image gallery is gonna pull the latest version of that image. And the rest of the settings here are exactly the same as they were before. So we'll click next and add our tags and we'll hit the review button to validate everything. It all looks good, so let's hit create. Back in our host pool, we've got our second session host registered. And just to be sure that we log on to the right machine, we'll change the drain mode on our zero machine to on. And I've reopened the WVD client and I'm logged in this time with the user Nova. And we'll launch our SIG VM. And there you can see our sign in details. We're logged on to the SIG WVD one VM and our ad remove programs shows all of the appropriate apps. So we are definitely working with the latest version of our image. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at this quick video on how we can update our host pools automatically with the latest version of an image using the shared image gallery. Definitely a way to help you not only manage your images, but also to scale your WVD instances, whether that's more instances per region or you need to scale out to multiple regions. So if you thought that this video was good or learned something new, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and let me know that you appreciated that. And if you have a question about this or anything else, around Azure, go ahead and leave us a comment down below. And while you're down there, if you see a question that's being asked and you know the answer, feel free to respond to it. We're all just here to help each other learn about Azure. And while you're down there, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and join us here in our community. And if you want to get a email when our new videos come out, which is about once a week, you can click that email notification bell as well. And we have been premiering our videos, so you can join us for watching the live premiere at midnight on Mondays, Eastern time. And I'll be happy to chat with you as we're watching the new premieres. And if you're looking for something more to help you keep learning about Azure, check out our newest video over here on the right, as well as a video we picked out just for you down here at the bottom. And thanks for joining us for today's video, and we will catch you in the next one. Happy learning.